And now that we understand the process of creating the Koch snowflake, let's talk about how to calculate the perimeter. And remember that the perimeter of an object is just the length around the outside of the object. And it's easiest to think of this step by step. So if we start with step zero, we can call that the perimeter at step zero, that starting point. And if we call each of these side lengths S, S for side length, it could be whatever we want. But the important thing is that each of these sides are equal. Then we can find the perimeter by just adding these together. We have S plus S plus S, which is just three times that side length, whatever it is. Now, keep in mind that to create step one, we took that original side length and split it into three equal pieces and then replaced that middle section with an equilateral triangle. But the takeaway is that this piece right here, for instance, and the other four, these are all one third of that original side length. So each of these are one third of S. And if we add all of these together, on each of these sides here, then we can find the perimeter for step one. We can call the perimeter at step one P1, and we have one third of S plus one third of S, and we do that four times just for this side right here. And we can write that as four thirds of S, one third added four times is just four thirds. And then we have to consider that there are three sides to this. So our total perimeter would be four thirds of that original side length multiplied by three. And if we want, we could simplify this, cancel out the threes and get four S. Since from that point of view, we can notice that it's bigger than our starting perimeter, but let's leave it as four thirds S times three, since in this form, we'll be able to notice a pattern. So let's move on to step two and the first thing we want to do is figure out how long each of these new side lengths are. And the way to do that is to consider that we took each of these sides, which are one third of the original side and split them into three equal pieces. Meaning that if this side is one third of S and we split that into three, that means that each of these are now one ninth of the original side. And we can write that down below. We can write that right here that each of these is now one ninth of the original side. So let's write for P sub two, the perimeter at step two, that we have this side length, one ninth of S, and we basically just need to figure out how many of those there are. And notice that we have one, two, three, four in this little section right here. So we can multiply all of this by four, and let me use a brighter color for that. And then we have four of those sections on one side of the triangle. So we can multiply that by four again. And lastly, we have three different sides of the triangle, which means we can just multiply all of that by three. And when we simplify all this, four times four is 16, we can write this, let me change back to that green color, as 16 over 9s multiplied by 3. And we write it like this, since 16 over 9 is really 4 over 3 raised to the second power, and this is multiplied by s and multiplied again by 3. And notice that the perimeter after the second step, we raise 4 thirds to the second power. But the perimeter after the first step, we have four thirds to the first power. And that's a pattern that we're going to see as we carry this out. And if we just look at this last step, we will see that we end up with the same expression, but raised to the third power. But let's prove that to ourselves. And then we can generalize this to steps greater than three. And the key to figuring out the perimeter after step three is to figure out how long one of these now tiny little side lengths are. And remember from step two that we take each of these pieces here, split it into three equal pieces and draw an equilateral triangle in the middle, which means that the new pieces are one third the length of these pieces. And we know these pieces 
are one ninth of the original piece. So if we take one third of one ninth, we get one twenty seventh, meaning that each of these small pieces is one twenty seventh the size of the original side length. And we just need to add up how many we have. So let's start by writing down that P sub three. We have this 1 27th multiplied by the original side length. And we just need to count up how many of those we have. Now, notice that for one of these tiny sections that we have four of those pieces. So we can multiply this by four and we have one, two, three, four of those. When we look at this subsection here, so we can multiply by four again. Let me actually remove that. And we have one, two, three, four of those subsections. So we can multiply by four again. And the last step is to notice that this encompasses one side of the original triangle and we have three sides of the triangle. So we can multiply all of that by three. It gets a little bit messy as we move forward in this, but if you take it piece by piece, then it is fairly straightforward and we do see a pattern emerge. So P sub three, we multiply four times four times four, that's 64. And we have 64 over 27 multiplied by s, multiplied by three, and 64 over 27, notice is really four over three raised to the third power. And we multiply by s and by three. And we can now generalize this pattern. Since notice that whatever step we were on to find that perimeter, we raise four thirds to that particular power. And then we multiply by the original side length and then multiply all of that by three. And if we want to consider the generalized pattern, what happens when we carry out this process to the fourth, the fifth, the sixth step, and so on, it will give us expressions that look just like this. For instance, if we looked at P sub six, it would just be four over three raised to the sixth power multiplied by S multiplied by three. And to find this would be tedious drawing out all those pictures, but it can be done. The logic is fairly straightforward once you understand the first few steps. But we want to look at this when we are carrying out the nth step. So any step we want, and basically this will just be four thirds raised to the nth power multiplied by s and multiplied by three. So the question becomes, what happens if we carry out this process infinitely many times? And we'll use a bit of the language from calculus we want to look at a limit as this step value n approaches infinity. And we can rewrite our perimeter formula in here and I'll write s times three, we can just write as three s multiplied by four over three raised to the nth power. What happens to this expression as n gets bigger and bigger as it approaches infinity? And these are both constants, so they won't change. But notice that four thirds to the n, if we look at each of the individual cases, we have four thirds to the first, four thirds squared is 16 over nine, which is bigger than four thirds. When we cube it, we get 64 over 27, which is bigger than 16 over nine. And as we keep increasing the exponent, this expression here, four thirds to the n, will get bigger and bigger. Since four thirds is greater than one and a number that's bigger than one, when we raise it to bigger and bigger powers, that number will get bigger and bigger. In fact, this is just an exponential expression. If we were to graph this as a function of n, where we even include all the real number values of n, it would look like an exponential function where this is the base of that function. And this will actually grow incredibly fast. But the main idea is that this expression will approach infinity as the step value gets larger and larger, which means that the limit as n goes to infinity of this perimeter is infinity. So in other words, the perimeter of that original Koch snowflake, when we carry out this process infinitely many times, the length around this shape is 
infinite.